sense. Unction can be divine backing. Unction can be spiritual help needed, you know, for something important. Now, we are going into the second half. Now, the first half just ended. You know, it is not the first half that always determines victory in anything. Now, it is the second half. And I want you to know that no matter how the first half ended, the Lord God Almighty will show himself more mighty in your life this second half in Jesus' name. In Exodus chapter 33 and verse 12 to 15, I read. The Bible says um, it was the encounter that Moses had with God. Genesis, uh, sorry, Exodus 33 from verse 12. And Moses said unto the Lord, unto the Lord, See, thou seest unto me, bring up these people, and, uh, and, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou art also found grace in my sight. Now Moses was speaking here. You have told me to go on this journey. You kept telling me, go on this journey but you have not told me the person that will accompany me in this journey now it's to show us that you cannot walk the walk of life alone i want you to understand that it's either you are with god or with the devil now there is no neutral person in this ways of life there's no neutral person so if you see somebody that is not with god i can tell you of a surety that that person is at the other side it's either with god or I mean, if you are not with god you are with the devil so Moses was saying, I can't go in this journey alone. That's why if you are here, you are just coming to church, you are not born again, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is dangerous to walk the walk of life without a person. Now, and who is that person? It's God. Even if you are working with the devil, I'm, I want you to know that one thing with the devil is this. Everyone that has worked with him, go and ask them, they will tell you. One thing with the devil is this, if he gives you a secret, he will expose your secret to somebody else. That's why you see that there will be one powerful, they'll say, some, this, this man is a very powerful abanist. Nobody can kill him. Nobody knows his secret. You'll just be shocked one day. One small boy will just come up and say, what, what? Is he not that man? Just pour sand on him and pour water. He will just die. Who gave him the secret? The devil. Who exposed the secret? The devil. But the Bible says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Lord most high, what shall he do? He shall abide under his shadow. God, he doesn't disappoint his own. So Moses kept telling the Lord, you have been telling me to move. You have been telling me to move, but you have not told me who will go with me. Which means, if nobody is going to go with me, God, if you are not going to go with me, do not tell me to go further. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. I think we are in verse um, 13 now. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee that I might find grace in thy sight and consider that this nation is thy people. Verse 14. And he said, God said, my presence shall go with thee and I will give you rest. Can I tell you, the journey of this second half, it is only the presence of God that can guarantee rest. The presence of man cannot guarantee rest though. I've told you a story before of one young Igbo guy. You know, he served under his master, sat for seven years. And when the master was to release him, that's how they do in the east. You serve, they want to release you, they give you money, start up capital. Many years ago, I'm telling you the story of about 20, 25 years ago. Now, and when the master was to release him, the master gave him 150,000. Beloved, 150,000 as at that time is like 1.5 million era of now. But this man has an in law, the in law, extremely rich. The in-law was a very rich man. The in-law promised him that don't worry, on the day of your freedom, uh, I'm going to give you three million naira to start up your business. And don't forget, his master gave him 150. So the day the in-law was to give him, the in-law traveled and told him, don't worry, but the time I'm back from abroad, I'm going to give you the three million naira to start up. So you know what this man did? He began to squander the 150,000 that his boss gave him. He will wake up in the morning, he will go and club. He will not return to the shop. People were closing his shop for him every night because he won't return. Now, the little goods he bought with the, the little money he had, people were helping him to sell. And when he comes, they, ah, we sold so, so and so thing yesterday, he will just collect it, go back to the club again. Now, with the expectation that uh -uh, by so, so and so time, my in-law is coming, three million naira is coming. 
lo and behold, his in-law died abroad. On the day he was to go collect the three million, he got to their house and he met them crying. What happened? They said the man died and they sent the message. Listen, the presence of any man going with you in any journey is not strong enough. The day I knew that the security is with God was this particular day where we were traveling to Ijebu. I and my wife we were going to visit our mom. And the police officers, they had a checkpoint. They stopped us. They were searching, you know, checking people's documents and searching their vehicles. All of a sudden, a man was coming with speed and was shouting, I'm robbers are coming. I'm robbers are coming. Before my very eyes, the police officer removed his uniform and ran into the forest. The boss was calling him, come here, where are you going? Is your guy, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone. Fact, the boss too ran into the coup and drove away. And I said to myself, if we trust this kind of people for our security, then we are <laughs> miserable people then. Listen, Moses said, if you don't go, I won't go. And when God said, okay, my presence will go with you. Once my presence go with you, you will have peace. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. This second half of the year, may you not put your hands into anything that will make the presence of God to depart from you. Now, let's look at what will happen to you when the presence of God goes with you. In Isaiah chapter 45, we are only going to take three verses before we begin to pray. When the presence of God go with you, look at what you will stand to enjoy. Isaiah 45, I want you to look at the life of this man. The Bible says, Toss here the Lord, to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding. Number one, to subdue nations before him. Because I'm holding his right hand, I'm in fellowship and friendship with him, I will subdue nations. Now, it's to make you understand that there are obstacles on the way forward. You may not know them. There are obstacles. If you try to do anything bad, you won't, you'll be surprised. You won't see any obstacle. You just try to say, okay, let me see, let me see, let me just take something and, and let me see, let me, let, me, let me set my gas on fire. Nobody will trouble you. But try to carry your cylinder. Say you want to go and buy gas. They will ask for money from you. Nobody will ask you for money for destroying your cylinder. Every single time you want to make progress, there are always obstacles. So God is now saying, Cyrus, don't worry, because I'm going to take hold of your hand. Ajon Loni. Tori kemi oni fiesi le madi elo wamu. And won't relay de to do si wajue. That the nations that are saying, you won't, you won't find way forward. God said, I will subdue them. That's an, one, one of the benefits of God going with you. Now look at, let's read on. He says, I will do what I, and I will lose the loins of kings to open before him the two-leaved gates, and the gates shall not be shut. Can you see that there are gates on the way forward? You cannot afford to leave God behind. In this journey of second half, make up your mind that your most important relationship should be your relationship with God. I come again. The most important relationship in your life should be your relationship with God. Because if you don't have cordial relationship with God, the two leave gates will not open. Not only that, in verse 2, the Bible says, I will go before thee and make the crooked places what? Straight. Now, the, the journey that looks as if is crooked. The road is not straight. You don't even understand. You don't even understand what to do next. You don't even understand how life is going. God said, don't worry. With me in your life, with me in the journey of your life, I will make the crooked way straight. Don't worry, I will make it straight. Go with God in this journey of 2023. He says, I will break the... I will break... Uh, in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron when God is going with people don't understand any man can leave you but don't let God leave you today people cherish their relationship with men more than their relationship with God and that's where people are missing it man is man man can never be God and God can never be man now, I now know verse 3. Are you looking for wealth? Are you looking for prosperity? Financial prosperity? 
God is saying, in relationship with me, I will give thee the treasures of darkness, which means there are treasures hidden in places where you can never expect. I will give you treasures of darkness. God is saying, I will give you. You see, all this year, eh, I don't have time for God. I don't have time for God. I don't have time. I always ask people that I always say, I don't have time for God. What have you achieved? With I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. What have you achieved? In fact, some of you with your I don't have time for God, it is the people that have time for God that are still meeting your need. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I don't have time to pray. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I don't have time for fellowship. I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. I'm busy. Listen, there are trials, but they are hidden in dark places. Only God knows where they are. Now, it says, and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I am the Lord. God is saying that I will, so that I will prove to you that I am God, I will give you the riches that, have, that are in secret places. Now, you know what that means? Which means in his presence, he will give you an idea. And that idea, once you implement it, bam, you just begin to make, make it. Please, put right your relationship with God the second half. I can tell you, my relationship with God has really helped me. Really helped me in the first half. Really helped me in the first half. Really helped me in the first half. So are you going to pray? Because if you know that God is the one you have, you pray like it's only God. <laughs> you know, people that have people, pray like they have people. You know, I don't, I, don't, I don't need all those prayers. All I just need to do is just to put a call through to my uncle. Maybe you are here like that. For me, I don't have people. Do you? Some of you have. I met a man, he was telling me, he said, Pastor Prince, I have never been hungry in my life. And he asked me, how does it feel to be hungry? I said, hungry. I said, hunger has stage so. I thought I was alone. Then one of our fellow pastors said, ah, don't mind him. He was telling me, don't mind that man. He's the only son of a wealthy man. And they use everything, everything. When he got married, they had, to, they had to tell his wife, this is our only son. Now, when the wife now gave back to his son, they told, her, they told her to resign. The family began to pay her salary. I said, for, for me, I don't have anybody. I know levels of hunger. Stage one of hunger. I know stage two. He said, eh. I started telling him the stages. And he was, he was shocked. I told him, I said there is a stage in hunger that you, you will no longer feel hungry again. You, you will be so hungry that the thing will not get to a stage, you will no longer feel it again. Have you gotten there before? Oh, also, we have, I have sisters too. <laughs> then the thing will come and go and start again. <laughs> the man was looking at me. If you don't have people like, hey, you better, you have only God. So let's take our prayers. We have, let's see, we are closing my, let's see if we can finish these 13 prayers. The first one is going to be taken from Exodus chapter 3, verse 21. Show us. Now, this was where God was telling the children of Israel. He said, I will make sure now, look at it. He says, and I will give these people, what? Favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when you go, Ye shall not go empty. The only reason why you should not, why you will not go empty is favor. You know, when we talk about favor, we are not talking about qualification at all now. Now, favor, one man of God is of blessed memory now. He calls favor partiality. But he now calls it divine partiality. When God by himself decides to change certain laws because of you. Now, do you know that Esther, in any way, 
would never have qualified to be queen if not for favor. Nobody there asked him, who is your father? Where did you come from? They just said, oh, you are beautiful. Oh, yeah, come, come inside. And the Bible says, you go and read the scriptures. The Bible says, as she entered into the citadel, the man in charge loved her and preferred her to be queen. That was the day she won. You are going to ask for favor for a glorious second half. See after me. You say, I call for favor for a glorious second half. July to December. Lord, let me enjoy favor. Jump up on your feet and let's begin to pray. In the name of Jesus, my Father, my God, I begin to call favor for a glorious second half. In the name of Jesus, put your favor upon my life that will make the second half ah to be magnificent for me. In the name of Jesus, are you talking to the Lord this morning? Reba, Santa, begin to pray. Favor, Lord, I call for favor. Oh God, I call for favor. Oh yeah, beres ni beres mo julere. Ah ah, si second half we have it done. In the name of Jesus, Father, put your favor upon my life. Begin to pray. Basata ya gada basanda yara. Shangada basi. Basanta ya gada. Are you praying for yourself? Lord, put it your favor upon my life. Put it upon my marriage. Put it upon my wife. Put your favor upon my children. Put your favor upon my ministry. Put your favor upon all that concerns me. Lord, your favor that will make me to possess possessions. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. Are you talking to the Lord? 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 Favor, oh God. 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 Yagada Basi. Ringada Basanda. Are you talking to the thank you, Father? In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and amen. May the high tension of God's favor be active in your life from today in the name of Jesus. Take prayer point number two, you will declare. Say after me, may the spirit of the waster never succeed to waste this second half. For me, in the name of Jesus, shall we begin to pray? Let's begin to pray. You spirit of the waster, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. You will not succeed to waste this second half for me. You will not waste my July to December. You will not waste my July to December. You will not waste my July to December. Are you praying? Rakadabas and Igbo Bueme, Tom Finkeni, Tom Fia Kokueni, Tom Fia Bueni Shufu, Oh, Nisha Shiori, Lati Janino Aye, me, Nyosha, Nia Package, you're doing Timotuoi, Loruko Jesu. Are you praying for yourself? Legadabase, Reke de Bosen de Lebos, Rakaya Dabase, Basanta Yanga Dabase, Shangad, begin to pray, 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 begin to tell the Lord, you spirit of the waster, I rebuke you. You will not waste my giftings. You will not waste my talents. You will not waste my opportunities. You will not waste my time. This second half of this year, in the name of Jesus, labels, there shall be results. There shall be good results. There shall be good results in my life, in my hands. This second half, in the name of, are you praying for you? I want you to pray. Don't joke with this prayer. Don't joke with this prayer. Don't joke with this prayer. Rekede basi, basanda yara, legede gede sene, rakaya rabasene. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. You take one more before we sit down. Then we now see the second scripture. Now this second one, you will say after me. But the power of your favor, O God, I begin to ascend into the realms of honor and glory. This second half of the year, in the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare. But the power of your favor oh god i begin to ascend into the realms of honor into the realms of glory this second half of the year in the name of jesus i shall not be stagnant i refuse to be stagnant hey by the power of your favor oh god i begin to ascend to so begin to pray for yourself begin to pray for yourself i will not be stagnant i will not be stagnant by the power of your favor lord i begin to ascend 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 in the name of jesus begin to pray begin to pray by the power of your favor lord i enter the realms of glory and honor in the this second half thank you father in jesus 
mighty name we have prayed. Now sit down. Let's look at the second scripture. We have three prayer points under it too. Now this second half you will ask for a change in it positive change in your level. Now, you know that some people were rich yesterday, but today's challenge has changed their status. There was a time when you could buy, afford to buy, you can just pack your car and say, okay, fill the tank. When fuel was 95,000, 95 naira. When fuel was one, uh, one, one, uh, 165. But now fuel is 520. Some people can no longer. That's why I'm praying. You listen, listen, you must pray for a change. If your level is not changing, let me tell you, yesterday's glory cannot meet today's challenge. That's why you need to be praying, Lord, my level must change. Can God change people's level? I saw it in the scriptures. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. Then we're also going to read 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 1. Second Samuel chapter 2 and verse 4. Look at the testimony of Anna. Please put it on screen. I don't have all the time. Second Samuel chapter 2. And verse 4. Do we open our Bible? Oh, that man will praise my God. And the men of Judah came and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying that the men of Judah, of, of sorry, Jabez Gilead, were they that very saw. Now the men came. Now that was when David now moved from a de- he moved from the realm of a destitute who a, a worker about. He now became king. Some men came. Ah! For your levels to change, there are certain men that must come to your life. Now, First Chronicles, chapter twelve, verse one. When God wants to change your level, don't forget He, he, will, he will connect you to certain people. Now, these are they that came to David. They came to Ziglag. To David at Ziglag, while he yet kept himself close because of Saul, the son of Kish. And who were they? And they were among the mighty men. Who are they? Helpers of the war. Show me verse 2. I didn't plan verse 2 before, but let's, let's look at it. So you pray. When you are praying, you pray in understanding. They were armed with bows and could use both the right hand and the left in hauling stones and shooting arrows out of a bow. Even of Saul's brethren of Benjamin. Show me the next verse. Some of his family members also joined. Now look at what this man could do. The chief was Ahaziah, the son of Joash. The sons of Shemaiah and move and move on, move on. Now I want to show you something. Verse four. Move to verse four. Their names are mentioned here. Move to verse five. Verse five. Their names. Now their names kept going. Now when you get to that verse, check it on the screen. There you see. Put it for me. The Bible says they came with one purpose. That they may make David king. They came with one purpose. That they may make David. They came with one, one purpose. One purpose. You are going to pray for yourself. Prayer point number one. You say this second half. Oh God, link me with the men and women you will use to make me great. We're discussing at home. And we're talking about something. And I said to my uh, sister, my children, okay, don't worry, is this what I will give a call? So I gave a call somewhere. And the person said, Where? I said, Lagos. It made me to remember, you know, to, to appreciate Link more. You see, what you need is in somebody's hand. What do you need to have it for God to touch the heart of that person? When God touched the heart of that person, your need is somebody's waste. You don't understand. Your own need is somebody's waste. Somebody's does me eh, is somebody's Christmas. Jump up on your feet. This 
second half. I didn't hear your voice. Oh God, link me with the men and women you will use to make me great. In the name of Jesus, shall we begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray, begin to pray. This second half of God, wherever they are, the men and women that you will use for my greatness, wherever they are, let them begin to locate me. In the name of Jesus, are you talking to the Lord? I begin to call them wherever they are. Father, the men and women, you will use for my greatness. Father, begin to link me with them. Father, begin to link me with them. Begin to pray wherever they are, wherever they are, wherever they are. Father, begin to link me with the men and women, with the men and women, with the men and women, with the men and women you will use for my greatness, oh God. Father, link me with them. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and amen. Quickly shout this say, Oh God, let relationship. Favor me this second half. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, let relationship favor me. This second half in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, let relationship favor me. Let re relationship will work for me. Relationship will favor me. This second half, oh God. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I can't hear you pray. I cannot hear you pray. Legada Barabas. Rakada Basekilibos, Legede Baskinde, Shangada Baraba, Ranga Yarabaskine, Basata Yangaraba, Rekada Basendilibos, Rekada Basse, begin to pray. Lord, let relationship favor me. The second half of God, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray, begin to tell the Lord, relationship will favor me. The second half, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Yakadabas, Raka Yarabase. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Quickly take the third one under it before you sit down. You see, after me, this second half of the year, I shall not be stranded. I want you to declare it as prophecy. This second half of the year, I shall not be stranded. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and begin to pray. I will not be stranded. Timely help will answer to me. Timely help will answer to me. This second half of the year, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will not be stranded. Lord, I will not be stranded. Lord, I will not be stranded. Yagada Barabas, Legede Gedes, Basata Yangada Baskinet, Shagada Bara, Rakayada Baskinet, Basata Yagada Baskinet, Shagada Baskinet, the boss. Thank you, Father. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Now sit down. Let's look at the third scripture Isaiah 41, verse 15. Now, you want to ask for grace to do big things. There is grace for big things. You cannot be outstanding while you are still at the level of doing small things. You know, I always tell us, if all you can do is to feed yourself, feed your family, pay your house rent, and live comfortably, you are not yet blessed. The Abrahamic blessing says, by you shall all nations of the earth be blessed. When there's nobody saying, apart from your family members, nobody saying, thank God for, thank God for so, so, and so. You are not yet blessed. So let's ask for grace to do big things. Isaiah 41, verse 15. I love this scripture so much. It says, behold, I will make thee. No, take it from verse 14 so that you will understand. Verse 14. Fear not. Thou what? Warm Jacob. You know what a warm is? Boneless. Uh, is it part of the incense also? It's boneless. It doesn't have bone. It cannot lift anything. But God is saying, fear not. Thou helpless, warm, boneless Jacob. And ye men of Israel, I will help thee. Say amen to that. Say the Lord. And thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. What will I help you to do? Verse 15 is now where I'm going. You don't have bone. You don't have air. You are helpless yourself. He said, God said, behold, I will make thee a new threshing instrument having feet. That's not even the prophecy. Thou shalt now thresh what? The mountain. You will now beat them smooth. That's exploit. For a, for a worm to thresh, to, to grind mountain. It's an it's exploit. That's what I'm praying for you this second half. The anointing that will make you do great things 
that has never been done in your father's house before shall rest upon you. Now we're going to pray. What's the prayer? Grace, you shout it. Grace for exploit. Shout it again. Grace for exploit. Rest upon me. Manifest in my life. This second half of the year, I begin to do great things. Jump up on your feet and begin to pray. Begin to pray. Grace for exploit. Rest upon me in the name of Jesus. Manifest in my life. This second half of the year, I begin to do great things. 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 Are you talking to the Lord? Basataya legeremos. I begin to do great things. I begin to do great things. I begin to do great things. The second half of the year, in the name of Jesus, begin to declare. I begin to do great things. I begin to do great things. I begin to do great things. I begin to do great things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Shout aloud, say, Father. I make myself available. Use my hands to build and to do great things in the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to declare. Heavenly Father, I make myself available. Father Lord, use my hands to do and to build great things this second half of the year. In the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Lake de Gedis, begin to pray. Towa mi shown la. Ah, monitori mi bere, o babatori mi bere. Begin to pray. He share agarao. He share yanu. Taye yo fi ma o. Babatori mi bere. Lord, great things through my hands. I make myself available, Lord. Mutawara mi ulua lo mi. Let it show la. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now, listen, this third one is a warfare prayer. This is how I receive it. Listen, don't say after me yet. Let me explain. Every altar, every covenant, every prophecy, fighting the emergence of great things in my life, you are destroyed. Now, I come again. Every altar, that's book, book, peck, peck. Every covenant, Every prophecy, fighting the emergence, don't tackle in the day one la in why me in all along with you know. Because listen, some people, some authors are fighting them, authors in father's house. That's why God had to tell Gideon, There's an altar in your father's house, go and destroy it. God could not use his hands for great things until he destroyed that altar. Some people, it is not an altar that is fighting them. Some say it's a covenant. And I, I, I had Reverend, uh, uh, Reverend, what's his name again? Holy Spirit. Many years ago, he's a prayer reverend. He told us about the family in Ondo State. We had their great grandfather made a covenant that all their sons will walk and die as Kokoyam farmers. Not even Riyam, Kokoyam. That was the covenant they had in their family. And this brother was born again, went to school, came out as a chartered accountant. Everywhere he went, he couldn't get a job. Everything he did to get a job, he didn't get a job. Reverend Moses Anansiola, yes, told us the story. Then while he was praying, God opened the eyes of his pastor that he should go back to his father's house in the village. That there's one pot that has always produced smoke. The man said, yes, there's one pot in our backyard. Fire has never stopped burning from it. He said, go and bring that pot. If we don't destroy it, go in the shell. Ah, but my daddy is always at home. He said, don't worry. Not knowing that the father inherited the pot from his own father. That one too from their own father. So it has been in the family. And as long as the pot is burning, that covenant is standing. So this brother applied wisdom. He bought a lot of provisions. Got a standby vehicle. Took him to Ndo State. Got to their company. Daddy embraced him. And gave him, he gave him the bag full of beverage. Different kind of uh, provisions. 
the father was happy. While he was eating, the brother went to the backyard, carried the pot, put inside the bag. As he carried it, the father felt that something has happened. He rushed into the vehicle. The father was calling him, Kende, Kende, Kende. They drove off. They got to Lagos and destroyed it. Do you know what? The second day, Reverend Aronsela said, the second day morning, the phone of the brother rang. That you applied with us two years ago. We are sorry we didn't get back to you. Are you still available to compensate you that we delayed you? We will pay you your two years salary. Will you still work with us? Two years ago. By the time he was okay, he now went back to his town. He now told his father what happened. The father could no longer curse him. The father now told him, we inherited this. And my father told me when he was giving me this pot, that as long as the pot is burning with fire, no son of the family will leave Kukoyam family. Now, some it is not a curse. Some it's a prophecy. I prayed for a woman too like that. She came to my office. He said the mother told her that if you bend down, you will never have a child. If you bend down, it is urine that will come out. And this woman has been married 11 years. She has never been pregnant for one day. But that's why we have God as our father. He can nullify whatever any earthly father or mother must have said. Say after me. Are you set? Say every altar. Every covenant. Every prophecy. Fighting the emergence of great things in my life. You are destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Begin to declare. Father, every altar. Begin to declare. Every altar. Hear you the voice of the Lord. Every covenant. Every prophecy. Fighting the emergence of great things in my life. You are destroyed now by fire. Be begin to declare that destruction now. Declare that destruction now. Declare that destruction now. In the name of Jesus. Begin to destroy them. Begin to destroy them. Begin to destroy them. Every covenant you are destroyed in the name of Jesus. Every evil prophecy you are destroyed. Begin to declare. It's a warfare. Begin to declare. This is a warfare. Begin to declare. Begin to declare. Begin to declare. Are you praying? 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 In Jesus mighty name we are prayed. For you to know that things like this exist. I'm not saying this to exalt the devil in any way. But I'm saying it for you as a child of God to always be prayerful and careful. One of her daughters that left her husband of recent, when she sat in front of me with her husband, we we're trying to settle them. Marriage that have produced three children. You know what she was telling me? Sir, I'm not doing again. I said, sister, do you know that you are the only person still left in your family with her husband? You yourself, I told her, I said, you yourself told me that when they, they leave their husbands, their husbands will begin to prosper. Then they will now regret later after the husband now remarried, they will now come back and agree to be second wife. I said, sister, you are a Christian. See what is happening. Her brother sat beside her and was telling her, she has to leave. She has to leave. Did this man beat you? He said, no. Why do you not want to leave? I'm just tired. I now told the man, the woman have left him now, going to one year plus. He was with me last week. I said, can you see that your life is better? Since this your wife left, your, wife is your life is better. Now you are building your house. You are almost true. Look at you that you are dying before. Look at your, your flesh is coming back. He said, Papa, me too, I don't really understand. She didn't take note of the battle. That's why I see, I always tell us as Christians, don't allow your title in church deceive you. 
The devil doesn't have respect for title. You know what the devil has respect for? Revelation. When you pray according to the word, you will have access. I decree whatsoever covenant, whatsoever altar, whatsoever prophecy that is fighting your rising, I command that they are destroyed now. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says at the mentioning of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. I command those altars to bow. For you to rise. I command those prophecies to bow. For you to rise. I command all those covenants to bow. For you to rise. Begin to emerge in greatness in Jesus' name. Sit down. Let's take the next scripture. We have just two more. Or three more. But we'll just, just take one, one prayer point from me so I can close. John chapter 5, 3 to 9. Listen. You will call for the miracle that will change your level for good this second half. Now, this man in John chapter 5, 3 to 9 had been, look at this, look at his association. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, with that, waiting for them. Wait, this was his association. You know where this prayer point came from? Yesterday I was studying and preparing for this meeting. And somebody called me. Hello, pastor. I don't know whether I can get 3,000 naira to send to my daughter in the school. And I sat down. Where I was, I was just thinking, what kind of association is this? Right there, another call came in. Hello, sir. Uh, the, the, you promised to send me some money. <laughs> I, I was telling myself, I was preaching to myself. You have to change my level, Lord. Now, I, they, they are not calling me to this. They are saying me, you are can number. Look at his association. Show me that scripture. This man had been in their midst for how many years? 38 years. In the midst of people that one cannot help the other. He can't be come. But the Bible says Jesus came. Let's read on. Let's read on. We don't have all the time. Verse 4. Jesus came and said to the man, pick up your mat. In this late great month, yeah, we have taken this. Pick up your mat. Rise up and work. The man picked up his mat, stood up, and left that association that he had been for 38 years. And he never returned. We are going to pray. Say after me. I, I call for the miracle that will change my level for good. This second half of the year. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and begin to call for the miracle right now. Begin to call. Begin to call. Lord, I call for the miracle. Miracles that will make my level to change for good. This second half of the year. Begin to call for it. I want to hear you call. Call, call. Begin to call. Begin to call. Le basata yagadas. Shagadabara. Le gedegedes. Are you praying? 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 Move me, Lord, by your miracle from my present level to the next level of greatness. Change my level for good, oh God. Begin to change my level, Lord. 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 In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's take one more because of time. So I will not abuse grace. In Acts chapter 16, 6 to 7. The prayer point you are going to pray from there. Put it on screen. For us to see, prevent me by your spirit, O God. From embarking on an harmful journey the second half. Prevent me by your spirit, O God. From embarking on the journey that will harm me. By your spirit prevent me. Uluwa, fear me, red dali, majekin big be se. Tima kaba mo in the second half. Look at it. Acts chapter 16, 6 and 7. The spirit of God resisted Paul from doing certain things. He said, Now, when they had gone through Phragia and the region of Galatia, and were doing what? They were what? They were forbidding of the Holy Ghost to preach. The word in age they were forbidden what they wanted to do was good but who knows what would have happened to them if they had gone to asia 
and they were they, sorry and after they were come to messiah they are sad to go into Beth, bethnia but the spirit did what suffer them not that's why every journey this year that will implicate you may the spirit of god prevent you from making it may god block every way that will lead to your death any journey that will make you experience shortage or loss, you will not embark it this way. So you are going to use your own mouth to pray it. Say after me. Say, prevent me by your spirit. Oh God, from embarking on journeys that will harm me. This second half, in the name of Jesus, begin to pray for yourself. spirit oh god prevent me from embarking on the journey that will harm me this second half in the name of jesus lord help me lord are you praying are you praying begin to pray for yourself Prevent me, O oh God, from embarking on such journey. In Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Before I pray, what do you trust God to do this second half of the year? What's your major prayer point this second half of the year? Let's begin to talk to God about it before we pray. That's the last part of the service. we are grateful again begin to thank the Lord for answer to prayers ah thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Father Lord thank you for answer to prayers thank you for answering our prayers thank you for answering our prayers thank you for answering your prayers in Jesus name we are praying Father, according to your word, you said if two or more shall agree as touching anything here on earth, it shall be done by you, our Father in heaven. In agreement, we believe that all our prayers are answered, Lord. We shall return to share testimonies.
to the glory of your name alone in the name of Jesus. This second half, may we not put our hands into anything that will make your presence to depart from us. Father, go with us this second half. July to December shall be season of manifestation of your goodness in our lives in the name of Jesus. Thank you that we begin to do great things. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Get your offering. Let's dance to the Lord as we give.